Good evening, Trinity. Welcome to the Wednesday evening Bible study hour. I'm glad that you're joining me. I asked you last Sunday to join me, and, and I thank you for taking me up on that offer. Uh, we give God all the praise, the glory, and honor on this day. For Even as we say on Sundays, we'll say today, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm, I'm extremely glad. This is one of the first times that I'm literally back live on Wednesday uh, doing Bible study. So we don't know how this is coming to all of you. We are doing some things under um on the back side of it to make everything look a lot better and we may have lost a little bit of our image um because we're going live but we want it to go live and i want it to be live the little recording is it's a lot it takes a lot of a screen on the guys and certainly it, uh, a lot of demand on me to have it ready for them so i'm so super glad that i'm certainly i mean literally you can you can pinch me literally i'm alive i'm live on this wednesday and because i'm live on this wednesday i'm going to say happy birthday to a lot of you on this day but let's open up in a word of prayer as we get ready to just dive into god's word i'm excited about it on this day father we thank you for your grace your mercy your kindness your generosity towards us thank you for being the father and the god that you are that you've loved us dear lord in spite of us and and not just because of who we are, dear Lord, but because of who you are and what you are in our lives. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins. We thank you for what First John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we thank you. Come now and send your anointing, send your power, your presence, your peace on us as we study to show ourselves approved uh, on this day, dear Lord, to learn more, to know more, so we can be more and do more. We thank you. Bless all of those who are listening at this very hour, and we just thank you for it, and we give God the praise, glory, and honor for it all. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we do pray. Amen. And I hope that you're um, also listening in. I'm, I'm always wanting to call my call in. My call in number, and I'm looking for that. I normally keep it someplace, and they're probably going to put it up. Don't forget, you can call in at 425-436-6378. 425-436-6378. Access code 743340. 743340 is the access code. 425-436-6378 is calling line. You ought to have that by now. And we thank you for it. Let me... Certainly say happy birthday to those who are celebrating birthdays on this day. Lawanda Haley is celebrating her birthday on the 9th. And, of course, tomorrow is our, one of our, our very own deacons, Deacon Reginald Redden, is celebrating his birthday tomorrow. Deacon, happy birthday. Um, Deacon Lewis Flood, who's one of our newer deacons who we love dearly and just just thank the world of, uh, of him and his wife, Duke, Deacon Lewis Flood. Um, happy birthday to you, my brother. And we wish you nothing but the best on on tomorrow. Donna Turner the third. If, um, um, we wish you happy birthday, little Donna. We love you. Know we love your father and your grandfather. Uh, Latasha Wigfall, happy birthday, Deacon's Wigfall. Um, um, wife and Natalie Maurice. Natalie, happy birthday on the twelfth. Donna and Latasha's on the eleventh. Deacon. Lewis Flood, Deacon Reginald Redden on the 10th, and Lawanda is today, and Natalie is on Saturday. Natalie, happy birthday to you. See, I'm live. I can give you all that kind of stuff to you. I think the last time we came to you live, whether um, from Bible study or or the um, Bible study or a Sunday morning was July the 10th. So we're just super um, happy to be live on this Wednesday evening coming to you in your um, own chambers. Amen. So let's look at the Word of God. We talked last week about uh, where we would be at. Uh, let's look at Colossians 3. We're going to begin again back with that 18th verse, and we'll go all the way to the 25th today. There's some things I want you to see. And so we'll get right into it. Let me get my glasses on so we can I can see. And we'll pick up that, that 18th verse, Colossians 3, 18. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Slaves, and this is where we're going at today, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only with their eye while they are or when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, 
since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Amen. And so, so last week, uh, Trinity, we and guests and all of you who are joining in with us, whether you are um, in this state, outside of this state, in the city, outside the city, we're glad to have you and we welcome you. Uh, we call you little team, little team Trinity. Remember, I call you Trinityites. And so we are glad to have you. But we, we stopped on last week um, talking about the role, the role of the wife, the role of the husband and the role of the children, kind of putting it all together. Now, all that is extremely important because of the fact that God wants to show um, himself fully in the family in that he wants to show himself through that godly man through that godly woman and through those godly children god wants to display uh put his, put his whole display um out to the world through the family the first institution that he established and so it is important that we walk in the establishment of what god decreed for family what god decreed for marriage and not what the world has set um, out for us or what the world says or what the world says marriage should be or what the world says our father should be our husband or our mother or wife or children should be no nope. all that matters is what god word says i know that we live in a world now where people are saying it is what it is and as i said in early uh, morning prayer with our prayer team it's not it is what it is it is what god word says it is i know that we have a constitution i understand that very well but I still say that God's word is our, is our constitution. We stand on the on the uh, uh, authority of God's word, and we are to live our lives out according to that word. Now, if you're not a Christian, you don't need to worry about what I'm saying. You don't believe in um, a Bible, you don't have to worry about what I'm saying. You don't believe in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter to you. You don't have to believe in it, but you who believe, you who have been changed by the blood and washed in the blood of the Lamb, we believe. And so we are to carry our lives out according to God's uh, requirement, wherever we may be, whatever we may be, we uh, may be in, and what where we may be in our, our 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 status, whether we are married or single. And so keep those things in your mind. That's what Paul was trying to set there. And then we and we kind of move into a difficult a difficult situation um, that is not always comfortable for us to uh, talk about uh, because of how ugly it has been, whether through with us in our time, and I say our time, our, our centuries, 19th century, 18th century, all that, and but also in first century, and that is slavery. Slavery is not a, a fun thing to talk about, especially if your family has, you know, been the, um, um, been, you know, in it the most or been a part of being persecuted. And that's what I'm trying to say. But it's, it's not a good topic. Certainly, I, I'll say more about it. That it's not been a fun topic for this, 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 uh, this country um, and how we have dealt with it. And so let's look at it. Paul, Paul does not condone. And we're going we're gonna to go with the scripture. One thing I'm, I love with the Bible is, is that the Bible tells the good, the bad, the ugly. It tells everything. The Bible doesn't, doesn't just paint a good rosary picture that everything in life was good. The Bible does include that slavery did exist. That slavery was there. The Bible doesn't run away from it. The Bible clearly stands up and say it was there. Um, human beings were a part of it, so the Bible has to place it there. But Paul here in the text, he does not condone slavery, but he does not condemn slavery at this time also. And remember, this is doing first century Roman Empire rule now. Now, there are a lot of folks that have came and ruled, and slavery has been up under their rulership. But now this is Roman, and this is Roman as a rule. But I want to say a word about slavery from their standpoint. Just a little brief word. This is a different type of slavery, and this is important because of what Paul's stand is and how he's going to attack this. And that this is a first century. It was a different type of slavery. It was uh, indentured servitude slavery. Um, some slavery where people were born into that. Some of this slavery was because of the fact you had to pay back debts and um, um, you had to work things off. It was a different type of slavery. And I'm saying different from the fact that it wasn't almost like our slavery. And both slavery had something to do with money. We'll get back to that. Um, but our slavery dealt more with ugliness and hatred and 
um, selfishness. It was it was a different type of slavery for for African Americans, uh, uh, for those who came from Africa, um, that we were looked at as even not not even part of the human race. It was a different type of um, morality or mentality that we dealt with with our slavery. And so I get back to that, but I want to just give you a picture of. Of, of first century slavery it was it was it was certainly about money and and paul had to be very very careful how he talked about that because all they saw was money and all they was using it for to get their money and 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 use these indentured um servitudes to either pay it back or get them the money that um that they wanted and so there was a master slave relationship so now paul um talks about this um this relationship with slave owners and he talks about it because these slaves um, had become Christians. Most of them had become Christians. And so the church now had no other charge but to deal with the new master slave relationship. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about a little bit. So Paul wanted to show both slave owner and slaves how to live together as Christians. That was that was that was his first setup. You know, and, and I say it that way because that's what he's he's after something. He's going somewhere, believe it or not. He really is. But he talk he, he doesn't just go out and say let's free everybody tomorrow and i'm going to show you why that would not have worked but he does talk about the relationship he's he's, he's talking about this new life that the slave owner has this new life that the that the slaves have um but also I want you to it's a lot of moving parts here also keep in mind um that women children and slaves had few rights during uh first century um they 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 they, 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 they were not thought of in in a in a in a big big way they were not looked at as important um people women or slaves or children and so there's a lot that paul is not trying to trying to deal with and he kind of puts it there in in ephesians and colossians and we see him again in in philemon trying to deal with these deal with the tough issues and we got to applaud him for that dealing with the tough issues because many of us don't want to deal with the tough issues we want to look the other way i'm going to talk about that that we'll look the other way and if we can get one person not to look the other way um you'll be surprised what a difference you will make and who you may be able to impact and so paul is trying to make a difference if you don't do anything else here and he's trying to show them how they ought to treat women how they ought to treat um slaves and children during the first century um, and, and, and this is, this is, this is important because these, these, these new Christians had freedom, um, that society had denied them as I just spoke on with women and children and slaves. So Paul wants the master to be caring, a caring master, to, to be a good husband, to be a good father, and that he ought to look at his children a different man in a different light, look at his wife in a different light and not like property, but look at them as people. So that's what Paul is dealing with. Um, and so so here, I think I read, he says that there, um, um, uh, somewhere it says in, in the 25th verse, anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs. And there's no favoritism. So Paul was trying to get these slave owners, certainly these men during that time, to understand that we are all equal in God's sight. We are all equal in God's sight. And then I want you to know that Paul he, this is, he's maybe could we, could be from Colossians in somewhere near the beginning of, but somewhere on the road now of dealing with this, this slave issue. He's somewhere dealing with slavery and, and he will deal with it more in the book of Philemon. Um, maybe you want to call it Phil, uh, um, Philemon, but Philemon or either Philemon. And so Paul never allowed this to be a dead issue. Uh, he understands, um, that he had to be very delicate with it. Um, because of the money issue and two other important areas that we got to play, uh, play, um, pay close attention to training. That is time and culture, time and culture. He, he's, he's dealing with a money is issue here, um, because they're making money out just like they did with African Americans. They made, that's what the civil war was all about. It was about money. Yes. Hatred, um, was a part of it, but, but they, they, they were losing money and they didn't want to lose the money because they had no slave to do the work. And, and, and somewhat that will be the same thing here in first century. So there, there's a money issue here, um, but there's also um, a time issue that Paul is, 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 look, is looking at. He understands the time, he understands the culture. And so Paul must rely 
on a few things here. And we're going to really de deal with this to, 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 uh, this afternoon or this evening. He must rely on the right time and the right opportunity to deal with such a, a humongous issue um, um, that we are still dealing with right now, believe it or not, in America today. The, at least the after effect of it anyway. And, uh, and if not slavery, we're dealing with segregation. We're dealing with um, 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 desecration of that. We've spent years of trying to make sure one race never make it. One race never have anything. One race would be just absolutely destroyed um, over a period of years. And that has certainly been the black race that we will make. Sure, listen, they and, and it's, you may get some may get mad at me from saying these things. You know, that's your prerogative to do so. But I have to be very, very clear and 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 cut with you is that when I think when, when I'm as I'm thinking about this. Um, is that we are the only race that, that that they've come up with laws for that we couldn't read, couldn't drink this kind of water, couldn't go to this kind of school. Um, there were laws to make sure that we would always be behind, that we would always be the tail, so to speak, that we would never gain any ground and never gain wealth. Um, think about it. Some of our families are first generation graduates or college graduates and even high school graduates, maybe if not, not today, certainly generation after a uh, 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 generation after me, um, first generation. I mean, that's 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 stuff that shouldn't be. But there was a there was a system set up to make sure that we would never have and never be. And that's what that's, that, that concerns me and ought to concern you. And that's why that's why we are where we are now and why we have the mentality we have now, because the whole system was set up to have us to think the way we're thinking, to act the way we're acting. You know, mama told me you'd never be anything. So mama told me I'm not gonna ever be anything. I'm never gonna be anything. And 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 I'm gonna be the best not being anything. That was a system that was that was that was pumped into our our neighborhoods, pumped into our lives, pumped into um the letter to Willie Lynch. Oh I, we can go on and on and I don't want to I don't want to belabor or get you all upset there thinking just thinking about that. But I'm trying to get you to see that it had to be a timing for us to deal with what we need, uh, what what Paul needed to deal deal with here. He needed to deal with the right time, the right opportunity to deal with this big, humongous issue called slavery. Paul will also say more on the issue. Uh, I think I just said that to you. Um, um, in Philemon, with the right timing and the right opportunity, um, as he he will address it further. But 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 I want to say more about this right timing and the right opportunity. I just can't leave that alone right now. The right timing and the right opportunity, Trinity, has always been a part of God's great arsenal in his redemptive work. And when you think about an arsenal, you think about gu guns and, and you may think about bullets and knives and and you know all kind of do we you know and that's what folks are doing all over the world right now, at least in the South, in the state of South Carolina, not just South South Carolina, but the United States. Uh, people are, are, are building up arsenals. I don't know why folks are um, of, of ammunition, arsenals of guns and 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 weapons to uh, defend themselves. For what? From what? Well, what do they think is going to happen? Uh, that's just how bad we are in in relation with each other, uh, relationship in this country. That folks are one. Uh, 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 what well, is another group thinking that, that someone is going to take something from them? There's a, another group believing that we're going to have to fight for our family. We're going to kill, kill, kill. That's where we are in this country, and that is sad. But that's where we are in this country. And but I'm I'm saying it to say that that was not God's arsenal. His arsenal was not guns and knives and bullets, but his arsenal, great arsenal. Um, in his redemptive work was the right time and the right opportunity. Opportunity in time was his arsenal. And so, and you say, well, are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure about that. We see this in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. From the beginning, from the very beginning, we see this. From the beginning, we see this arsenal um, um, of time and opportunity. Jesus Christ came, um, Jesus Christ came at the right time. In the fullness of time, the Bible declares that Jesus Christ came to earth. God made this 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 over over four thousand years ago. He made that 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 uh, declaration um, um, that Jesus Christ would come and be the Savior. But at the right time, just when everything seemed like it was falling apart, 
I mean, like everything was falling apart. You know, remember it was 400 years. And by the time we get to Matthew from, from Malachi, 400 years, 400 years is, is not a long time, but it's a long time. Nobody has spoken to them. They're, they're, they are now in the captivity. The Israelites are in the captivity of the Romans now. M many folks have had them over those 400 years, but now they're in the hands of another group of people. But no word from the Lord. No word from the Lord. And then finally in the gospel of Matthew, John the Baptist, who is Jesus Christ, cousins by six months, first cousin, comes preaching um, in the wilderness, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It was the right time. And then six months later, Jesus Christ is born. Don't tell me about time and, and opportunity. So it, it was the right time and in the right opportunity. We see it at his birth. We even see it at his death. We see it. And I can go on and on with, you know, with different things talking about that. His resurrection. And I love the resurrection. That's just beautiful timing and opportunity because at the resurrection, it is the, uh, uh, well, not the resurrection, not only the resurrection, I'm sorry, not the resurrection and even to his ascension. That, that's what I really want to talk about, his ascension. You know, when he went at the 50 days being with the disciples or 40 days or some to 50, 45 to 50 days. And he he returns back to the father. He returns back to the father while I, I'm in the presence of the disciples. Remember, he never allows goes into town to let anybody else see him to believe that he is alive and that and that this is not a hoax. You know, get it? This is not a hoax. He never allow anyone to even think that. Um, um, give them the opportunity to say he, you know, he really is risen. He, I mean, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. We saw him in town. He doesn't let, he doesn't prove himself to anybody. None of the Pharisees, none of the Sadducees. He only approves himself to his twelve disciples, a few other people, and he allows himself to go back to uh, um, to heaven. In their view, they see it. They, these twelve people see it. Um, it was a calculated. Um, thing that Jesus did. His, his ascension was calculated. He, it was a right time, right opportunity. Um, and he did it right in front of his disciples. He knew what he was doing. And, and this is why Paul is on, on this journey now, even though Paul was not there, but Paul meets him. Paul understands the seriousness and the work of the redemptive work of Christ. And so I, I'm saying to you that it's not about bullets and God. Don't let anybody fool you. It's not about that kind of stuff. It has always been the right time. And it has always been about the right time. And it has always been about the right climate. Now, the right time and the right climate may not never look good to us. Those things may not ever look good to us. I mean, the 60s, the, the movement with, with, with um, the march on Washington with Martin Luther King. I'm going to say something about that. None, of that. none of that didn't look good, but it was the right time. And Jesus Christ came in a culture where where it was one big melting pot with everybody, every nationality was all there, just stirring all up. It was ready to, it was a powder cage, ready to blow apart. The 60s, the Vietnam War, not much different than probably what we got going on right now. And I don't know how bad or worse can it get, but it's beginning to be a melting pot, one thing after another. Could it be that God is calculating and, and God timing and his opportunity is impeccable. He knows exactly when and how and who he's going to do something with. Timing and, and opportunity is everything. Timing, the right opportunity is everything. Almost like I talked to you children so many times about, 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 uh, what's that? Um, excuse me, I'm messing up my own, my own stuff here. What is that stuff I'm always talking to you about? Uh, what is it? Um, um, uh, the door, uh, not just the door. I can't think of what I want to say to you. I'm so excited that I'm live right now. Um, but I'm always talking to you about um, the next, uh, almost like an opportunity. It'll come back to me. Um, um, that that great doors or something, great, great opportunities. Right. And I think it's what it was, opportunity. I'm always saying that opportunity knocks. That's it. See, Holy Spirit brings it back every time. Opportunity knocks um, 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 once. And I say yes, but opportunity really knocks more than once. Great opportunities don't come around, but it, it, it is a right time and it is a the climate, the culture. Everything must be right to receive one of those babies. That's what Jesus' whole redemptive work was all about. Timing and the right opportunity. It was a great opportunity when he when um when he um um came to earth, when he went to the cross, when he when he um rose from the dead, and when he ascended back to the Father. Those are great opportunities. 
And so, so, so it's always been about the right time, the right climate, the right situation um, has to um, come. And then, listen, there are a lot of things we got a melting pot going, and there's a lot of things we got to deal with. We need to. It, it, has, it has to be the right timing, the right opportunity to deal with discrimination, to deal with um, racism, uh, sexism, hatred. Uh, and I would put it all in one, in some of this in another category, any stronghold that must be moved in our life. We'll need sometimes the right, it's got to be the right timing. And so sometimes things don't work out, not just because they don't work out, it may not be the right timing. Some things we're just going to deal with a little longer. And boy, am I learning that in this new uh, situation we find ourselves in now, that, that we got to let God play it out. God played out the right timing. It'll all work out. It's in, if God is in control, like we say, and we believe that he is, it got to work out. It will work out. You and I just got to sometimes be still, sit before the Lord. The Bible tells us, be still before the Lord and come into his majesty and dwell and sup with him and talk with him, but be still before the Lord. And so here's what I'm, I'm trying to get to. It, 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 is, it, it is a combination of all kind of things that got to work. But one thing I want to get you to understand is no one person no one person can change the world unless that one person is Christ. Christ didn't even change, a per change the world with one person. He did it with 12. And those 12 got others and others. I'm going someplace with it. They, they, the contact just went on and on. And, and, and just think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I'm so excited. Uh, think about it. Um, uh, it was the 12 disciples that Jesus trained for three years. And they will, they will and they did um, go on to do some great things. I forgot to unplug my unplug my telephone for it not to ring so please forgive me um that's just a that's just the devil trying to stop me from being excited about what i want to talk about um but i want you to think about it. i want you to think about what what i'm saying here and i got to get myself back on track but what i just say that telephone threw me completely off but i'm live now nothing i can do now it's live um i said i want to be live i forgot to unplug that particular telephone um, but everything got to be at the right opportunity. I slam forgot what I was going to say because of the telephone line. But we'll get back there. Um, right. That's what I was going to say. Ain't God good. Thank you, Father. And that is that those 12 disciples, those 12 disciples were, were um, um, did a great job. They would do a great job. They have done a great job. But it was not the 12 disciples that that pretty much define what what Jesus was the was the was the epitome himself of what Jesus great redemptive work was by you would have thought that it was paul or i'm not excuse me paul but you would have thought that it was peter or james or john and they they are worthy of it but none of them took that mantle it was the apostle paul who took the mantle and and and, and was the epitome of who and what jesus christ um um did for his three years he took that gospel but it wasn't one man they taught another man and then that man had remember Barnabas had to get them to realize that paul was an okay guy and then, and then, and then, and you know, others had to be a part of it. Paul thought John Mark couldn't be useful. Then he found out that John Mark was very useful. And it's, I'm going someplace with it. So I'm trying to say, no one person, and we sometimes put that on 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 one person's shoulder, and and we are wrong to do so. No one person can do it. No one person is Superman. No one person of one race can can abolish or, or could abolish slavery. And we somehow we condemn the Bible for that and saying that somebody should have did something. I, I, I would like to ask you who then, how we how what, what, how we would have done it. I don't know how, but maybe you got something better than me. Um, you know, something I don't know. Listen, it would, it, it would and still takes the cooperation of many, not the one, but many, many, many different people to appeal that's what we're going at to appeal to the hearts of those who did not want to end slavery paul couldn't come on the scene immediately jesus couldn't have come on the scene immediately i'm gonna come back to that in a second couldn't have come on the scene in immediately and say oh hey by the way i'm gonna wipe out slavery tomorrow they would have killed him they literally would have killed him the 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 the, the, the same day that they, they tried to kill him when he just preached his great gospel they were they were loving it for one moment having fun with Jesus for, um, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes of his sermon in the last 15 minutes of it, they said, kill him. And, 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 you know, and, and, and supernaturally Jesus, um, um, moves, um, from them. They, they don't know where he's, where he's at. 
And so you can see how how people can change on them. So Paul couldn't come in and um, uh, listen, talking about the gospel and dealing with the Sadducees and the and the uh, Pharisees alone was enough to get him killed. Um, just talking about religious aspect, and now he's gonna take money out of people's hand and tell them that slavery is an evil empire. You know, there's no doubt it was an evil empire. No doubt it was wrong. But Paul could not let that be the platform of what he was trying to do. That would probably be in the platform or that would be a part of his 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 behind the scene movement. And we see that with with in Philemon, that he is moving behind the scene. I wish that you could and hope that you see what I'm trying to say here. He, he would need other people to help him out. Maybe like the slave owner who was the owner of Philemon. He, he would need other people to see this. Um, which I can think of the uh, movie that I saw. And if I, I, I know the movie that's on my mind about the school somewhere up there in, in North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. And I can't think of the name of that particular school that's on my mind. School is named after the after the white man who truly played a major role. One of the people who you don't even know anything about. College, um, um, uh, something forward, something, something forward. It almost came to me, and I can't fully think of the name of that school that um, that this man made a major difference along with other people and his fight, his long fight to end slavery. But he was right up there with so many of them that his name doesn't really get enough credit for what he has done and maybe the Holy Spirit will give me his name back again. I don't see your, um, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So I'm running this through my tech guys that I'm not able to see what they are seeing and maybe, um, something for something. Oh, I can't think of the name. And maybe, um, my main man, one of my men will see it. And I can't think of the name of the, the college for nothing. I'm, it's coming to me. Got something to do with a four. Um, okay. I'm going to move on. I won't be able to get it. And if somebody pop it on the screen for me and what I'm going to show, be happy to see that if when or either um, uh, Adrian pop it on the screen, they're able to, they, they, they probably won't be able to do it because they can't figure out what I'm trying to say about the school. And I can't think of the, the gentleman name right now. It may come back to me. So anyway, it can't be one person. It will be more than, 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 than one person um, to, to make, make a difference. No one person can abolish anything, but if one person can, can pass it on. You see what I'm saying? It takes the cooperation of many of the many and not just the one. So, so again, the question is why, what, you know, I think I've kind of given you a little bit, I've kind of went ahead of myself and in, in, in giving you the answer that the, that the question I did not ask. And that was why didn't Paul take on slavery head on? And I think I kind of already answered that now. Um, he would have been wiped out before he got started. Why didn't Jesus take it on? God would have been wiped out before he got started. Um, um, and so they understood that. So now you have to find another way as somebody say to skin, to skin, a, a, a chicken or skin, a snake or something like that, skin something. I don't know what it is, but we got to find a different way. Uh, they say there's more than one way to skin a skin a cat. That's what it was. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not advocating. We go out and skin cats. Okay. Um, and I, I, and that matter of fact, I didn't know you could skin a cat, but that's not what I'm saying. Um, uh, that's not what I'm trying to say. Just, it's just more than one way. Maybe to cook chicken stew. How about that? Let's leave it like that. Let's go with chicken instead of a cat. All right. So Jesus in his in his inaugural dress in Luke's gospel and 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 Paul throughout these thirteen Pauline letters concerning how we are uh, um, talk about how we should live and lead as Christians. That's all Paul talked about. He was he was he was appealing to a stronger stronger uh, 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 substance, appealing to um, not just just our eyes, not just our ears, but he was appealing to our heart. Jesus dealt with our heart, even when he dealt with people, he dealt with 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 their hearts. So one of the best explanations of why Jesus, not Paul, flat out took on slavery in the beginning was because of again. Here we go, the culture and the times they were in. See, culture, time, culture, time, some culture, time. It got to be the right time and right opportunity. So slavery, no matter what kind of slavery it is, at the end of the day, don't forget, it's about money. And I said to you earlier that that Jesus uh, himself, even we saw that in the in the when when they turned the church into a, at least the courtyard of the church into a, a gambling a casino. They turned it into Las Vegas. Um, so it was all about money to them. That's all it was ever about. He knew that. 
And and when you deal with people money, boy, they 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 hurt you. And so you gotta you gotta be real real careful. Um, and so they would have been crushed by this opposition if they would have got started um um any earlier started any other way or brought any other message other than the message that the people didn't think that was dangerous. Boy, Jesus, something else, hitting something else. I'm going somewhere with it. He brought them. He he didn't deal with the message of money to them. He dealt with something else. He he dealt with the message of the gospel, and the gospel would deal with something else. You remember when Jesus dealt with? Um, there was a certain man that wanted to see Jesus as he came through. He was considered one of the worst human beings that could be on the planet of Earth because of his role, his job, and his position. He was he was a Israelite, but he was a tax collector. I think his name was Matthew. Um, he was a tax collector. And, and uh, was it Matthew? I don't think it was Matthew. I think there was more than one tax collector. I think it was another name. I got to get his name now. Um, I can't get his name for nothing right now. And Jesus tells him that, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to sleep at your house. I'm going to come, I'm going to eat and dine at your house this, 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 uh, this, this evening. I'm going to be with you. And, and, and the, the particular gentleman says to Jesus, Jesus sups with him and man treats him like, you know, treats him like gold. Now he's, you know, he's a, he's a scoundrel. He's a scoundrel because of the fact that he, he, he works for the, he works for the enemy against his own people, the Jews, and he skims off the top. He steals from them. He, he, they know he's stealing, but long they get their money, the, the, the Romans don't even care as long as they pay them taxes. You know, something what they're doing now. We know a little bit about taxes today, don't we? So those taxes, he skims, he not only get the, the share that Romans want, but he kind of keeps his share for him, for himself. And, and boy, that really burns the people up with him. So they don't want anything to do with him because he is their own kind and he's he's stabbing them in the back. But Jesus deals with this brother. And Jesus talks with him and and I cannot think of his name. What's wrong with me today? Um, and Jesus, that's because I'm kind of off the top with it anyway. Jesus says to, so to him, hey, I'm going to I'm going to come out to your house. We're going to we're going to talk. And, and, and he sees him in the sycamore tree. And I'm just cannot get that name. What's wrong with me today? So he says to him, uh, um, he talks to Jesus. They die and they have a good time together. And he just gets up and says, Jesus, listen. And in some sense, he just says, I repent. I mean, you know, I, I repent. Of my, I don't want to live this life anymore. I don't want to be this person anymore. I want to be the person. I'm, I'm, what I see in you is unbelievable. I see a purity in you and a purity about you that I want in me, that I know that's not in me. Um, and I want what I see in, in, in you. And so what, what, what happens? What happens? He says to Jesus, I will repay, um, twice. I will give back twice what I've, I've taken from people, uh, three times what I've taken from people. I will give more than I took from them. But that's some kind of, that's some kind of miracle there. Yeah? That's some kind of, that's some kind of change. That's some kind of change that somebody sending me something. Ain't God good? Um, it's a key. It ain't God good. I tell you what, we got some of the best Bible study students around the whole wide world. Reverend Coke, I'm just so fired up. And thank you for sending me that. I don't have the thing what my guys are looking at. I know people have already sent it on that, but I did have my cell phone and Reverend Coker sent it to me. I tell you, ain't nobody like Trinity Associates. Nobody. And and um, they are top of the line, baby. Top of the line. So so Sakias says, I will. You know, I'm going to give it back. I'm, I'm giving it all back. But listen, we talk about the issue, and that is the very issue that's 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 heated. Money. It's all about that money. It's all about the dollar, dollar bill, baby. It's, it's the money. And as the kids turn around saying, "I'm giving it, man. Look, I'm through with this kind of life. I'm I'm giving it up." Jesus never mentions this to him. He never talks to him about that. He just something about the presence of being with Jesus and the move of the Holy Spirit does something to this brother and I, and I and i would say nothing more than what it did to us nothing more than what it did to us it changed our whole lives he was in the presence of jesus physically we came in the presence of jesus spiritually and it changed our whole life you can take it to the bank it'll change your whole life my wife loved to sing that song. I love to hear her sing that song. I know I've been changed. Does that mean that I'm perfect? By no scratch of imagination. But I know I've been changed. I know I've been redeemed. I know God has done something to me and through me and for me. And that's what God and that's what Paul will, a brother Christ and Paul, in some sense, will do together here. That's what will 
That's what will happen. That's what will happen here. And I'm lo losing my spot. I'm so fired. I'm losing my spot. Um, let me get back to the, um. I'm looking at my spot again. I just lost my spot, but that's okay. I just got so excited. Because I want to show you this is real important. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm here talking about the money issue. He he deals with the money issue without dealing with the money issue. That's what I'm saying to you. And 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 it changes this man's whole life. I got so excited. I got off, I got off point. Um, so the gospel of Jesus Christ could never be what 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 Paul understood that he could not do is water down the gospel of Jesus Christ to a political or social movement. It could never be watered down to a political or social movement. The gospel is about soul saving, not just not. Yes, we 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 enter twine political and social things in there but that's that's almost what they would say about martin luther king he was a great social reformer and social movement martin luther king jr was a preacher of this gospel he never um um, um not allow uh, never never stop preaching never not allow folks i'm trying to say that some kind of way that he never got that twisted he wanted them to know i'm just not just a speaker i'm not just some reformer I am a preacher of the gospel. And Martin Luther King did his sermons to appeal to the hearts of America. That's what the nonviolence was all about. He knew what he was doing. He was dealing with dealing with the morality of people. He, if I deal with the hearts of people, it touched the hearts of people. It'll change the people. If I change that wife in that house, it'll change that husband in that house. Martin Luther King knew exactly what he was doing. Others couldn't get it because their hearts weren't changed. Martin Luther King's heart was changed and he knew that was the best ammunition that he could come up with. That was the best arsenal that he had, arsenal of love to touch that he um those who were filled with hate and that he could just touch one or two of them and two or three of them would touch somebody else. So let's look at it. Let's see where you're going up with this thing. Jesus came to change and touch our entire lives changing our present course of, 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 of eternal damnation to a course of eternal life that's 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 that that was and in the process so many other things would change also jesus came not only preaching a gospel of of of, of, of repentance but a gospel that clearly stated we must be born again and that's what's wrong with America. That's what's wrong with us today. That's what's wrong with the world. And everybody say, I'm like this and I can do this and I'm supposed to do this. And you can't tell me what to do. And, 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 and I know how I am. I know how I feel. Well, I know how I feel too. I feel like sitting sometimes, but that's not what I'm going to do. Listen, that's why Jesus came and Jesus came preaching. I know you messed up. I know you got a sin sick soul. I know that there's some things inside of you you can't control. There's some things that you can't handle. There's some things that you don't even know what you don't even know how to deal with you. And that's why he said you must be born again. You must be born again. We are trying to live a life without being born again. It ain't going to work. I don't care who you are. I don't care who your parents are. I don't care where you stay. I don't care where you come from. You're going to always miss out on what God wanted to do because you never understood that you must be born again. So Jesus will indeed deal with slavery as God the Father dealt with slavery in the Old Testament. The Israelites. He dealt with it, did he not? So it's not something that is off the agenda, or off off the agenda, uh, 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 the agenda rather. It's not something out there. He, I mean, it's not something that he's gonna forget about. It's still on the on, on his agenda to deal with. I'm gonna deal with, but I did listen. I got a different time that I'm in. Just like I had to deal with um with with, with Pharaoh, I'm gonna deal with the opposition here. Maybe totally different, but I'm gonna deal with it. And I've always said to you, God never did the same thing twice. He always do deal with it differently. So. So he'll do it this time. He'll do it one man at a time. And this was the very thing um, he did as he, as I said earlier, he chose his disciples, one disciple at a time. Think about it. Um, um, as soon as he chose his first disciple, that disciple wouldn't call his brother. And then somebody else called somebody else. They brought other people. 
It was a heart change. It changed. It was a, a impact. One impact the other. Did it one man at a time. Listen to Alexander. I'm coming to some closure now. Alexander, put my glasses on to read this one. Alexander McLaren in his commentary on Colossians expanded further uh, uh, understanding with Jesus one individual concept at a time. Now remember Paul follows Jesus' method because that's this is pretty much all Paul, that's all Paul is doing. Uh, he's a product of, of of the method of Jesus Christ. He believes in whatever and however Jesus did it. That's how he he doesn't he doesn't deviate from the format. He stays with it. Um, hallelujah, hallelujah for that. That's what we that's why we messing up the day. We deviate from the format. We we think that we are smarter. We think we got a better way to do it. But Paul doesn't deviate with the from the format. He stays with it. And just as Jesus touched Paul, Paul said, I'm going to touch somebody else. And we saw that. Touching Paul absolutely changed the ball game for the disciples. So this is what McLaren says here. He says, first, the message of Christianity is primarily to individuals. That's why, that's why, listen, that's why what happened to me when I went to Clapton College with my friends and my cousins and everybody going girl hunting and 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 I didn't understand that God was hunting also. So I might well say I went God hunting because I didn't even have no idea. And and out of all of those people, God picked one person. And later on, I will influence a whole lot more of those guys' lives later on. Listen at this. McLaren first says the message of Christianity is primarily to the individual or to individuals and only secondarily to society. First to the individual and then to society. It leaves the units whom it has influenced. Listen at this thing, good God Almighty. It leaves the units whom it has influenced to influence the mass. Well, we got to work to do it, don't we? It leaves the unit whom it has influenced. Well, we ought to go tell everybody. We used to sing a song. And matter of fact, I've been singing that song all week. Isn't that extraordinary? I have been singing that song and I won't try to sing it here. I'm happy enough and excited enough to sing it here because I'm not, I'm back on Wednesday night. Welcome to Wednesday evening Bible study. I'm back. Um, I, um, and I'm back live. Um, um, that song, I will tell the world, I will tell the world about him. Tell them that the comforter has come. Tell them that what Jesus has done. Oh, tell them that, uh, and whatever it is. I can sing all day without, and that's a good one there. But we used to sing that song back when I was at the Samaria Baptist Church. And it has brought joy, so much joy in my soul. But 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 the, the thrust of the song is, I will tell the world about him. I'm going to tell the world about him. I'm going to tell them the difference that he's made in my life. I'm going to tell them what he has done in my life. And I want them to see that joy that he has placed in me that I might be able to touch someone else with that same joy. That's the unit. That's the unit. Individuals. And then secondly, only primary um, to secondarily to the society. It leaves the unit whom it has influenced. What has God done in your life? See, see, see. I've said to you a hundred, hundred times before. I said hundred and ten today that that uh, uh that 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 God is going to ask you how many folks you've influenced with the, uh, with the gospel. How many lives have you touched and changed? How many folks' lives are changed because they came in touch with you and you impacted their life concerning the gospel? Not just me, Thurman Born preaching on Sunday morning, but I'm talking about just individual conversations. How many lives have I impacted? that can say that I'm saved because I met this man that was filled with joy about what God did in, that God did in his life. And I was so convinced what God did for him and did in him, I had to try it myself. It leaves the unit or the units whom it has influenced to influence the mass. And so I said to you again, we got a job to do here. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best this way. Evil will always prevail and advance. So as long as good people sit on the sideline and do nothing. And so, so, so we can complain all day until one person get up and touch another person. One person get up and touch that person and that person touch that person. Whatever that situation may be, we ain't going to make no major change until we decide to 
operate in that manner. Secondly, he says, it acts on spiritual and moral sentiment and only afterwards and consequently on deeds or institutions. So listen, he says, secondly, listen, this, this, this movement of God, this movement that he talks about here that, that you, that you may have got the message of Jesus Christ is, it, is primary to individuals. It is an individual me uh, message. And then he says, secondly, it acts on spiritual and moral sentiments and only afterwards and consequently on these uh, institution. So he's saying that God wants to deal with us. He, there's a spiritual transformation. And and he deals more deals with the moralness of manhood, and God wants to get us there. That's, I mean, we I mean we know something happened. We know something took place. We know that that, that, that I don't feel the same out that the way I used to. Feel. I don't have the same taste. I don't have the same desire. We know something happened. And then he said, thirdly, it hates violence. Martin Luther King talks about that in in that second when Martin Luther King he dealt with. Um, he said they're gonna beat us up. We're not gonna fight back. We're going to deal with the moralness of, 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 of America. And we're going to go to the jail and we're going to wing or go cussing. We go go sing and we, we see, we see something in the air, some beautiful song that I used to love to hear him say, talk about. And, 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 and he said, well, we're not going to, we're not going to hate. Um, we're going to, we're not going to be violent. That's what he says in that third point. Um, we're going to trust wholly uh, to the enlightened conscious of what we believe God can do with our enemy. So it meddles directly with no political or social arrangement that we see going on now and around us, but lays down principles which will profoundly affect these. Do you get that? It, we, we, don't, we don't have to deal directly with, uh, it, it says it meddles, what God is, God is on a, on a transformation of the whole body, the whole person, and it has nothing to do with political or social uh, arrangements, but it lays down principles which will profoundly affect those areas and leads them to soak into the minds and hearts of everyday people. If we, we, you get, get them to Jesus. That's what those guys were trying to do, man. It'll change their whole life. They'll, it'll change how they even do politics. It'll change how um, uh, our president um, lead this country. I mean, something about what God, when God touches us, it is a change. And man, that change is evident from the inside to the out. So you don't need to, as Dr. King said, you don't need to have a PhD to make, make a difference. You just have to have an encounter of the heart with Jesus Christ. That's all. Nothing less, nothing more, nothing less. That's all you need. Just an encounter with Jesus Christ. We got enough people with PhDs and DDDs and, 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 oh, I don't watch mine now. Yeah, DD, Dr. Mint, DM, DM. We got enough people with all of that stuff, but they ain't got no heart change. There must be a heart change. There must be a heart change. God's not looking for folks with degrees. God's looking for folks who heart has been changed and said, I know that I've been changed for that, for the angel in heaven and signed my, my name. So I'm saying to you that you can't come in contact with the living Christ and remain the same. What makes the gospel even more believable and extraordinary is the lives that um, it affects and impacts and the lives that it changed. And we, see this scene in the gospel over and over and over and we see it in paul's letters occurring time after time after time after time so christians are the first of all the salt of the earth never forget who we are and the light of the world and even though we're not acting like that as a whole we're not looking like it but that's who we are and we are and and, and our spiritual influence must be felt on society to the glory of God. Our, our, listen, our spiritual influence must be felt on society. And you say, when? If not, when? If not now, I don't know when. If not now, I don't know when. It must be felt on society like never before. All throughout the Bible, we, and, and this, and you say, well, who are, who, who should do it? Just ordinary people should go do it. Tell it to the least, the last, the left behind, the look over, the left behind, whoever that may be. We tell it to everybody. We get that message out. And all throughout the Bible, we see God using ordinary men and women to change society. 
we got to stop waiting on whether it be the president or two of our senators or, or our congressmen or, or um, we have everybody riding on, on Jamie Jamie Harrison. Hey, listen, I have nothing against Jamie Harrison. Uh, nothing against these politicians. I have nothing against any of them. But 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 they're not the they're not the key to what need to happen in America. We are. We've always been. I've said to you before, I say it again, we are the real first responders. Let nobody tell you anything differently. We've always been. We don't remember who we are in Christ. Just good old ordinary people make all the difference. Good old ordinary people can change the world. I know Jesus took 12 of them. Nobody would have ever used them to do anything in this life, allowed allow them to be just good old fishermen. And, and that was their place and that's where they should have stayed. But Jesus took those guys and shook up the whole wide world and changed the whole world with ordinary people. It would take ordinary men and ordinary women to change our society, to change not 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 depending on Dr. Foss. It's good to know all of those great names, but I'm talking about ordinary people, those folks who I've been talking about praying behind the singing, who've been praying and praying and praying. It's going to take those folks. That's going to make a difference. So Paul closes his letter by mentioning men who God touched, made a great stride to change the world in which they live. Men like John Mark, who Paul, I said earlier, thought could not use. But Paul learned better that God can use anyone to his glory. And I want to remind you tonight, Trinity, that God can use anyone to his glory. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I believe that you are one of those people. And I pray that you will accept Jesus Christ as your savior, even on this night, and allow God to do something to, to you that he may do something through you. And then he'll come back, I promise you, and he'll do a whole lot for you. Only Christ can do that. And I ask that if you're not saved, that you would accept him as your savior tonight. And that and if you want to find out more from us, call us at 803-254-7142. I know I'm doing something a little different. Um, and my guys may not have that up, but I'm doing something a little different. 803-254-7142. Leave a message and tell us that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Someone will get in contact with you. How do you do that? Let me show you now. Just repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I ask that you would come into my life, change my life like you changed the key your life. That I was lost up in a tree. I might not be up in a tree lost like he was, but you're lost up in something. And you need Jesus to change your life. He'll change it. Come to him just as you are. Be, 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 be honest with him and come to him and tell him that I stand in need of a changed life. I'm a sinner and I need you to change my life. I thought I had it going on and I realized, God, that I don't have it going on. I'm sick of how I'm living. I'm sick of what I've done. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Change my life. Take control of my life. Give me a brand new life. And change my life right now in Jesus' name. Give me a new heart. Come and take up resident in my heart, in my life, and take control of my life. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. I hope that's your prayer. I hope that you call in 803-254-7142. No one is there now, but leave a message. We'll get back in contact with you, I promise you. And we tell um, all of you, thank you for listening. My time is up. I truly, truly thank you for yours. I hope everything went good. Tonight, I don't know at all. This is our first night back live, 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 live. I'm excited about it. Nothing like coming to you live and knowing that you're there. You knowing that I'm, I'm here. Um, we going we got some other little tricks up our sleeves. We're gonna still do and ask that you pray for us. Pray for our whole communicate, our entire communication ministry. Um, but until next week, I look to see you next Sunday. I'm hoping that I'll see you next Sunday live. Um, we're looking forward to being with you. Praying that God will do something um, for us and through us. Um, don't forget this our 99th church anniversary coming up coming up next Sunday 99 years um, I'm asking to tell everybody get the word out Reverend Henderson, Reverend Henderson you get it out as much as you can the rest of this week 99 years of our anniversary get it out to all you can get it out let's celebrate 99 years we are one year short of 100 years in ministry and we thank God for all of those who have paved the way um, for Trinity Baptist Church and thank God for allowing us to be here now to carry the torch over and that if God allow us to do so and we pray that he will but if we don't do anything yes we know that we're going to celebrate we pray if the law allows us to make it we will celebrate 99 I'm looking forward to doing that with you to tell God thank you and you ought to tell him thank you with me 
Uh, again, my time is up. I thank you for y'all. Join me next Sunday at the eleven o'clock. Um, at the eleven o'clock uh, Sunday hour and at six o'clock next Wednesday. I'm excited about our. I'm excited about our our uh, 99th church anniversary. So get the word out and join me. I want to see a big cluster of people, even more than than usually joining in. I want you to join me on our on our 99th. Amen. Hey, I love you. You take care of yourself. I look forward to seeing you not only next Wednesday, but I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Until then, be strong and be safe. And don't let nobody fool you that this thing has stopped yet. Yeah, it's not that ugly enemy is still out there. So be safe, be strong, and most of all, you be encouraged. Until next Sunday, I sign off and I say I'll see you then. Thank you so much.